What's up everybody? Jolly here. Um, we were last in the Painted World when we were doing the Dark Souls walkthrough. So that is where we are picking up. The last time we unlocked the shortcut, which is uh, the door I just walked through. And actually, hold on. Yeah, it is this, this area. Um, anyways, so yeah, there's a shortcut. We went ahead and stopped right here just because it's a good place to pause since it takes a while to actually unlock the shortcut. Um, in here, you will find these weird monsters that kind of resemble the first boss from Demon's Souls. I can't remember its name, but it was like a, a big version of this. And they didn't really have arms, but they looked like this. They were like shields and spears and blobby looking. So, um, you don't have to fight those guys. You can run past them. They're really easy to get away from, so you don't have to mess around with those guys. Um, and also, I'm doing this recording post-gameplay. Uh, so I uh, was actually just talking to a friend while I was doing this, so... This commentary comes after the game. <coughs> so I've, I've cut up a, a couple different sections. I actually got lost trying to figure out how to get through here. And there's the, the door uh, down at the bottom. You actually have to hit this switch, which is down here. There's two ways to get down here. You can take this ladder, like I went down here. And you can also go down the well. And in the well, <coughs> you'll come across some invisible doors and that sort of thing. Now, the biggest thing to look out for, especially if this is your first playthrough, um, is these spinning skeletons. They will eat through your shield. Now, if you're coming down here for the first time, I'd recommend using a shield with high physical resistance um, and stability because these things will just break your guard. So at this point you should have something like uh, Eagle Shield. I believe you even have Havel Shield. It would be a good idea to just go ahead and equip it for down here. Because there are plenty of these things and you can't really see them coming so you just want to walk around with your shield out. My shield that I have is the, the Sunlight Shield <coughs> and it's fully upgraded and they can still break through it if, the, if I stood there long enough. So, yeah, just uh, keep that in mind. Um, there's a, a couple things down here. Like I said, the switch. There's also uh, a couple souls for you to pick up. And there's the switch. I just walked past it. I actually missed this my first time through, and that wall right there is actually invisible. That's where you would come through if you... Right next to the spike pinwheel guy. That's where you would come through if you uh, took the well down instead. It's in that same courtyard that you started with, or not started with, but you, that you walked into with all the, the blob spear guys. Don't know if they have names. They used to give instruction manuals with the names of enemies and stuff back in the day. Now people, we just have to make up the names because we have no idea what they are. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, you might wander around here for a little while trying to find all these souls. So here it is. Um, the switch, and if you die, you know, your bonfire is clearly not far away, so you can just run down there, and if you did lose all your souls and you're at zero, like I did at that point, I just ran down there to hit the switch, and then I died right afterwards, so it wasn't really much of a loss. And here's one of the invisible walls. This, like I said, this will take you back up to the well. And there's one. Anytime you see a wall that just has like a, it's like in between two, I'm sorry, I guess it's hard to explain. But anything that has like two columns or something and it looks like there could be a walkway there, just roll into it. I mean, I don't remember all the invisible walls, but there's a, there's a ton of them. So if there's a dead end, try rolling into it. I mean, that one could have been, but you know, it wasn't. That's a good example of what you want to roll into. Because this game has plenty of those invisible walls. In this corridor, you definitely want to have a really good shield. Because you'll get trapped in here. And they will just run into you over and over again, break your shield, and then destroy you. 
And if they hit you while you're healing, uh, yeah, you're probably going to die too. Um, these guys spit out toxic poison when they die. So if you have, um, I think it's purple moss clumps or, or something like that, just have those handy in your inventory. Because you'll, you'll see a lot of those guys in this area. <clears throat> so, that's the only thing that's by this little well area. And after you hit the switch, um, you can go back up top. And there's a, there's a few things up there as well that we're going to get to. As soon as I show you where the well ladder is. Here it is. Okay. This will give you a perspective of, oh, there's a bunch of guys just waiting up here. <coughs> See, it's still in this courtyard, so not far away from where we originally went in. I, said, I, don't, I don't even think these guys are really worth messing with because there's so many. But I decided just to mess around right here. So they all start throwing their spears, and if three or four of them hit you at once, you know, it's an instant death, so I, don't, I just don't feel like it's worth the time. There's so many out here. So there's a, another cool thing off to the right. There's uh, this graveyard. Well, first I'll show you where you, to, you to use the uh, annex key to get up top, and there's um, I think it's the black ember that you'll find back here once you grab the, grab the NX key and use it over here. Now oh, there you go. Once again, trying to roll into walls. It's always, it's always worth taking a chance. I have yet to see a wall that was invisible where you just rolled off a cliff. Now up here we have, uh, there's a spell up top. I think it's the Vow of Silence. And we have uh, one of these toxic guys, and I think there's like four to five of these harpies. Now these guys can be a bad time, especially on this stairwell. Because you can't really move, move around much, and they can somewhat fly and jump on top of you. And if they grab you, uh, you're probably just dead. Even in full health, I have like one bar of health left. And they're all up here guarding the Bell of Silence. And, uh, oh yeah, do not roll in that hole. There's nothing down there. Nothing but death. If you're looking for death, you'll find it. So this area, it can be a little frustrating with all these harpies. I would reckon, oh, here we go. You see how much damage it's going to do to me. So I have about one bar of health left. And don't panic like that and roll off. So, just try... Use your soul mass if you have it. Or trying to keep your distance. Or if you're melee, just try to lure them down to the stairwell. It's it's really just not a good idea to face them up here. There's just too many things that can kill you. One wrong roll kills you. They can all jump on top of you. You don't have enough room to move. So get to some safe ground and keep your distance. And you don't 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 be concerned about your magic because once you unlock the area for the boss, it's a, a straight run down there, and you don't even have to fight anyone. You can just run past everything, which is the case with most of the places. But I don't think a lot of people know that. People think you have to fight and kill everything every time, and think the game is super difficult because of it, but can actually just run past a lot of things to get back to where you were. And it makes it uh, a lot a lot quicker. Maybe not safer, but I think you're increasing your chances of dying if you keep going through the same area trying to kill everything. So down here, um, I said there's going to be an ember down here and there's going to be a couple more harpies that try to jump on you. You 
you see him flapping wings. I thought I just saw him. That's the dark ember, yeah. I think I said dark ember. Well, maybe there are no harpies. Maybe they, if you go up top first, then they don't come down here. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. So I did it this way, so. Who knows? And it may actually be easier to go get that dark ember if they all come down there. So at least you're on some flat ground and you don't have to worry about falling off and getting grabbed on the stairs or anything like that. So that may be your best bet. Now once again I say, avoid these guys. They're not worth your time. And now that you hit the switch, you saw the, the statue rotate, you can go to the boss. First, I want to show you one more cool thing that I found out on this playthrough. If you go where all these blob looking things are and you go out the right over here and you're in human form, you get invaded by an NPC. And this NPC has um, unique equipment. I don't think it's related to um, any of the achievements, but it's some cool different equipment. He has this huge hat that looks pretty funny. You might want to get. There's also a, a soul over here. Yeah, a couple actually. So you just run around this graveyard for a little bit, and this, I think it's Jeremiah something, King Jeremiah invades you. He does have a couple, well, one really devastating attack. It's the, the Chaos of Fire or something. One of those spells that just has, like, basically volcanoes erupting around in a, a big radius. Um, I'm not sure what he's resistance to, resistant to, but he does have a lot of health, so whatever it is. And it's a... Uh, Okay, so that's that's the chaos spell, and I said I, I don't know what's strong against him, so I just used all my magic and none of it really seemed to do a whole lot. Um, the best thing I noticed after I spent all my strong spells is that uh, just trying to like get around him and stab him in the back seemed to work the best once I uh, once I gave up on magic. And he seemed to be fairly weak up close, because all he had was this, this slow attack with the, the, what's it called, the notch. He had some spike notch thing that you pick up after you kill him. That thing's fairly slow. And this, this thing is devastating, so you definitely, definitely want to block that and stay away whenever he starts casting. It's really slow, so you can tell when he's casting it. Try to try to get behind him. Melee would work right here. I was scared to try to like keep hitting him off the level over there because I didn't want to not pick up whatever he was gonna drop. So I would just try. I think in these cases they just respawn the the item somewhere up top. So here you go. The backstab was definitely the strongest thing to do. So you get humanity for killing him, you get a ton of souls, he has notch whip, and you don't get his outfit until after you beat uh, Priscilla, I'm not sure how to say her name, I think that's right. So yeah, you're going to have to wait. And she is an optional boss. Um, if you're trying to get all the achievements, it's not really optional, you do have to kill her. One, you need her soul to make a, a unique weapon, and two, you also need to cut off her tail. And cutting off her tail is no easy feat because she is invisible most of the time whenever you see her. So you kind of got to make her appear and then work on that tail. So for their, her, I would recommend using something like uh, the chaos spell because you're not going to be able to see her. Any of those big area spells that are kind of slow to uh, cast, but that's okay because she doesn't really move around a ton whenever she's invisible. They kind of give you a little break there. 
So try try out those spells. Um, I oh, well, homing crystal soul mess really doesn't do anything until she appears. So it will not find her while she's invisible. Um, you could also try using um, something like uh, a fireball, like great fireball, and just throwing it. Maybe you'll hit her. You can look for her footsteps on the ground. I guess I'll talk a little bit more about her when we're actually there. So you used to be able to, you saw I just looked up there, you used to be able to drop from the top without even unlocking it. I think they patched that because that whenever you kill the dragon up there, half his body still stays there and you used to just be able to like kick it or something and it would just move out of the way. But now it you can't do that. You have to actually go and find the switch to open up the area. So here's Priscilla. She d talks to you for a second and gives you the option to, to just leave. And if you're going to take off her tail, I would say just go right to the tail right here because she is just going to let you attack. And just start wailing on it. Get your strongest weapon and just hit the tip of the tail as quickly as possible. You can see it just scooting around back there. I went for my crystal soul mass and trying to uh, get some two-handed attacks in. But I don't really do a whole lot. So try to go for the tail. Now watch closely on the snow and you can you can see little footprints. It's kinda hard to see while we're rolling around and stuff. Your own game you have to watch closely. I see you just saw some movement over there. <coughs> And when I was having trouble with her the first time, I would go stand over here and just throw fireballs and stuff like that because, I mean, there's only one direction she can come from, so if you just stay over here, you know, you're not going to get hit from behind. And you saw that soul right there. That's actually where you pick up the rest of King Jeremiah's loot. And said so she doesn't really attack a whole lot. Once you start hitting her, she appears. Well, that, she only has uh, two attacks, really. She just swipes that blade and she's got that blue magic. It's really slow and easy to run around. It's really not that bad once you understand like what she does, how she just disappears and reappears. But the first time, if you're playing her, you might be wondering, like, what the hell is going on? Where is she? Why am I dying? Well, there you know. So you saw her footsteps right there, and the fireball happened to work. But do watch out for that scythe. It is deadly. The magic is pretty powerful, too. But that's it for the painted world. So, um, yeah. After you fall down here, you go right outside the painted world and watch out. There's a ton of guys just uh, waiting there. The the guys that throw their little knives. I think you just stand there. You'll be fine. You also get a homeward bone, so you can use that right away. You might want to equip it before you even go through this cutscene just so you can go back to your bonfire and then warp from there. If not, you're going through here and then you have to run to your next bonfire. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.